Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. So there are many different genres of horror movies. You have your slashers, ghost movies, torture, possession, but then there are psychological horror movies, often characterized by the damaged psychology of at least one of the main characters. Since we're usually dealing with super unreliable protagonists here, we can oftentimes experience some really strange and twisted stories that will make you question everything you see. So today we'll check out some of the most twisted psychological horror movies. And we're starting off with a movie I saw recently called Caveat. <laughs> this is a horror film that incorporates both psychological and supernatural elements to create an almost dizzying narrative. It's about Isaac, an amnesiac, who takes a really easy and surprisingly high paying job from Barrett, his landlord. All he has to do is babysit Barrett's niece. But it can't just be that easy, right? Well, the young woman Olga is catatonic and is in a house where her claustrophobic father committed suicide because the mother trapped him in the basement. Isaac arrives at the house which is in the middle of nowhere surrounded by water, and he can't swim. Once inside, Barrett reveals that he's required to be locked into a harness with a long chain that restricts him. This is the caveat. At first, Isaac tries turning down the job, saying that he's changed his mind and doesn't want to do it anymore. But Barrett is able to talk him back into it. Anyways, as Isaac spends more time at the house, he discovers troubling new things at the same time as his memory resurfaces in fragments. He then realizes that he's actually been here before, and once he enters the basement, he figures out that there's a lot more to the father's death and the mother's disappearance than he has been initially told. The film plays with elements of memory, torture, and the supernatural to create this non-linear and fragmented narrative. The house itself almost acts like a representation of Isaac's mind damaged and falling apart with the truth hidden away beneath the surface. The harness fits into that as well as Isaac is mentally restricted to only having access to certain parts of his memories. The reality of the father's death lurks underneath Isaac at all times, resurfacing with his recovering memories. The dynamic of babysitting is also quickly completely upended as Isaac merely has a distorted account of what's really going on and Olga knows more than he does. Then there's this creepy ass toy rabbit that can communicate by playing its drums. It's never outright explained what this thing is, but in several scenes we see it start drumming when it gets near to the corpse of the mother. That coupled with the realistic eyes that are wide open might indicate that the rabbit is trying to get people to see the reality of what really happened here. As there are a lot of lies surrounding the disappearance of the mother. Olga covers her eyes during her catatonic states, but the rabbit always keeps his wide open. The film creates the sense of escalating danger and the aura of decay through the jarring discovery of new and old truths by Isaac. But just as a warning, this one is definitely a slow burn. Next, let's talk about Censor. This is a movie about a woman named Enid and the trauma that she's dealing with, or more accurately, not dealing with. She lost her sister Nina many years ago, with the event being so traumatic that it caused her to block out the memory of what exactly happened. She isn't even sure if her sister is still alive. In the present day, the parents have finally decided to make it official and write up a death certificate for Nina. But this upsets Enid who still wants to believe that her sister will one day be found. Enid works as a film censor, very fitting, so she spends her days watching horribly violent films and cutting out specific scenes. Despite doing her job well, the films are still often blamed for real world violence, causing Enid to take a lot of flack from the public. One day while doing her job, she sees a location in a film that reminds her of the limited memory she has of her sister's disappearance. This leads her to do further research into the director's work. She finds a lead actress that looks strikingly like a grown-up Nina, so Enid heads out to meet her during a movie shoot. Once there, she gets mistaken for an actress and is put into the film. There she sees the other actress, believed to be Nina, about to be attacked during a scene, so she rushes to protect her by chopping up the attacking actor with an axe. Upon realizing what she has actually done, she blames the director and kills him as well. Then she takes the actress with her to her mom and dad. The primary themes in this movie are related to elective, let's call it, ignorance. We often ignore and are unable to accept negative situations and instead of dealing with them directly, we reject reality and substitute it with our own. When confronted with unavoidable fear or pain from real life, 
people often choose not to believe it and blame it on something else, such as the public getting angry with censor workers or Enid attacking the film director. Ignorance is also clearly represented with Enid's censorship job, which blocks violence in an attempt to prevent society from imitating it, when of course in reality violence existed long before movies and would continue to exist without them. And just as Enid removes violent events so that the general public doesn't witness them, she removed the events of her sister's death from her memories so she wouldn't have to confront it. But similar to removing scenes from movies, just because Ina doesn't remember her sister's tragic fate doesn't mean it didn't happen. We see this very literally at the ending. It appears like Ina is unable to accept her own actions and the fact that this actress isn't Nina. So she starts to see the world being full of rainbows and sunshine. When Ina takes her fake sister home with her to their parents, the radio states that all violent movies are now banned and crime has dropped to zero. Of course, in reality, she has actually just kidnapped this total stranger and brought her to a now very confused and frightened mom and dad. Next up is The Night House. This is a film about grief just as much as it is about the supernatural, and it has some really creative, scary moments. So here we follow a recently widowed school teacher, Beth Parchin, experiencing the darker recesses of grief following the suicide of her husband. The death is incomprehensible to her, and her search for meaning spirals into obsession and danger as the story unravels. She's a sharp, well-worn character whose grief shows up as anger arising out of the lack of answers or apparent reason for her husband's actions. Owen, her husband, has done something with no forewarning and seemingly no explanation in what seemed to be an uncharacteristic move. In a way, the movie grapples with some of the universal consequences of shock, lack of closure, and complete surprise that someone you knew was feeling like this. Another aspect of grief that is dealt with in this movie is the social perception of it. Beth's interactions with her colleagues, her neighbor, and others reveal the distance that a personal tragedy can put between one and the world. The isolation and singularity of the experience are also well explored in this film. The movie, in its essence, is about depression and its insidiousness, but still, the movie has a surprisingly fast pace, by the way. This depression becomes personified as nothing, a literal existential void that takes everything. The devil, in a way, is replaced by this void, nothing. When Beth recounts an accident she had years ago and how she was dead for four minutes, she said that there is nothing. Nothing happens. In the final moments of the film, this nothing emerges not as a neutral emptiness, but an all-consuming, relentless, and insatiable void. This nothing has been after Beth since that accident, and it took her husband in order to get to her. The theme of inversion is also heavily employed here. The night house reversed, the, the inverted letters, the numbers, and the split moon, these are all manifestations of the inversion of order and worldliness in nothing's realm. The narrative also develops through the spaces in this world. It plays with architecture, symmetry, mazes, and especially negative spaces to create a sense of unease. Anyways, we've got time to talk about one more movie, and that is The Void. The Void is about a group of survivors holding out in a hospital to avoid a strange hostile cult and the bizarre monsters that they turn people into. Deputy Sheriff Daniel Carter discovers a man crawling along the roadside, so he takes him to the nearest hospital. This hospital, however, has suffered a large fire recently, so it's mostly abandoned as they move supplies to the new location. There are still some staff members and patients there though, including a nurse named Allison, Daniel's estranged wife with whom he lost a child. It's a Monday night at first, until a nurse kills a patient, then goes after Daniel with a pair of scissors, but he's able to shoot her first. He goes out of his car to report this, but several strange cloaked figures attack and injure him. The cult members don't attempt to enter the building, but they aren't letting anyone out either. Soon, the nurse that Daniel took down comes back to life with a grotesque transformed body, sprouting tentacles all over and kills a state trooper. A father and son duo then help to destroy the monster as they apparently have experience with this sort of thing. As the story progresses further, we learn that one of the doctors at the hospital, Dr. Powell, couldn't stand the loss of his own child and searched everywhere for some way to prevent an even reverse death. Eventually, he discovered an ancient power and uses it for experiments on patients and himself, as he runs a cult of followers. Daniel ultimately puts a stop to this by shoving himself and the doctor into a portal from where the dark power originates from. The story revolves mainly around despair and how we choose to handle it. 
This is seen with the parallels between Daniel and Dr. Powell. Both have suffered the incredibly tragic loss of a child. The key difference is in how they deal with this despair. The doctor cannot let go, and goes beyond the realms of humanity to attempt to see his daughter again and prevent death from ever happening. Even though it's a somewhat natural and understandable response, it of course just leads to prolonged suffering for everyone involved. From his patients that can never die, to the victims of the murders, and indirectly the cult members as well. He is taking his despair and spreading it across to everyone else like a wildfire. Daniel, on the other hand, deals with his despair in stride, suffering from the pain, but moving on. This is further represented in how he gets injured throughout the film, yet keeps moving forward to continue helping others. From the traumatic event of the nurse attack, to getting stabbed in the chest by a cultist, and even to the very end when he gets knifed in the back. He keeps pushing through until he literally pushes himself and the doctor through the portal. In the end, some people are left alive thanks to Daniel's efforts, despite the doctor's attempt to take everyone down with him. This movie really shows how our misery can spread to those around us, and conversely, how we can still help ourselves and others despite what we have been through. So those were just some of the really exciting psychological horror movies that I watched recently. Let me know what the most twisted psychological horror movie is that you guys have watched. Anyways, as always, I hope you liked it and that I get to see you guys in the next video. Bye, guys.